It has been quite a few years since Huawei entered the laptop scene here in Malaysia. With various Huawei MateBook offerings across a wide price range, there's something for everyone. But it seems like Huawei isn't content to just the mobile PC market. Enter the Huawei Mate Station S, their first entry into the desktop computing market. Powered by an AMD Ryzen 5 4600G, performance is pretty much guaranteed. But what about its implementation? We are also quite interested to see how Huawei will integrate their multi-screen collaboration tool into a desktop PC. I'm Vincent Chan from Porter.net and let's check out what the Huawei Mate Station S has to offer. The Huawei Mate Station S as a whole comes in two huge boxes, one for the monitor and one for the Huawei Mate Station S itself. It is too big for our usual unboxing process, so we are just going to do a simple one, starting with the monitor box. As you would expect, there's a HDMI cable in the box, a setup guide, a cute and compact power adapter, and of course, you can probably see the monitor in the background. Meanwhile, in the other box, we have yet another setup guide, a standard power cord, the Huawei M100 wired mouse, and last but not least, the Huawei K150 wired keyboard. While the chiclet design might not be particularly outstanding, it does have a fingerprint sensor, which is definitely not something you see every day. I do appreciate that Huawei went this far to make a secure login this much more convenient. The Huawei Mate Station S is a pretty compact PC. It's a mini tower with a fancy wavy pattern in front. Huawei calls this their star trail design and I like that it is actually functional. Some of the lines also serve as an intake vent and the fact that it is integrated so well into the design is definitely commendable. Right at the top right corner, you get the power button that also hosts an LED indicator, an audio combo jack, USB Type-C that offers USB 2.0 connectivity and fast 18W charging as well as a USB 3.2 Gen 2 USB-A port that can deliver 10 gigabit per second speeds. No idea why the USB-C doesn't get the 10 gigabit per second speeds though, but I guess it has something to do with the chipset Huawei decided to go with. Oh, on the rear, we get three more audio jacks for the mic in, line out and line in. There's a HDMI and VGA port for display output and a pair each of USB 3.0 and USB 2.0 ports. You also get a LAN port for connectivity, and a serial port in case you want to use the Huawei Mate Station S with some legacy devices. There are two PCIe expansion slots, but we will get into that in a bit. All the way at the bottom, you can see the standard port for AC power input. On the sides, the Huawei Mate Station S isn't particularly interesting. The left side panel has a little vent that's similar to what we have seen during the older Pentium 4 era of cases. It has been proven to be effective enough to keep what we endearingly call press hot cool so I do believe that it will definitely be sufficient to cool our much more modern AMD Ryzen 5 4600G here. On the lower left right corner, you can also see a Kensington lock for physically securing the Huawei Mate Station S to your desk. This is after all an enterprise oriented system, so I'm not surprised to see one here. I just kinda wish the lock was on the rear of the Huawei Mate Station S because it will get in the way here if you actually use it to secure your system. There's nothing to see at all on the right panel. Next up, let's check out the monitor, which is very unimaginatively named the Huawei Display 23.8. I definitely look forward to a better name for the successor to the Huawei Display 23.8. The display mount comes in one piece and all you need to do is clip it in. Quite convenient. The spacing between the screw holes do appear to be a WESA mount, which will offer more flexibility than the stand that comes with the Huawei Display 23.8. But don't quote us on it. The display measures a pretty standard 23.8 inches and supports 72% of the NTSC color gamut, which is pretty close to the full sRGB color gamut. Huawei claims that the display offers a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1. The controls for the monitor is a row of buttons on the lower right side. The design is very minimal and the only thing aside from the display panel itself is a sliver of a bezel on the bottom that hosts the single Huawei logo. The stand is also very minimal, consisting of a sleek metal pole that holds the monitor on one end and connects to the stand on another. Design-wise, I have zero complaints about the Huawei Display 23.8. For I.O., you get VGA and HDMI inputs, which exactly corresponds to what the Huawei Mate Station S offers. There isn't much else left to see here on the back, aside from the silk screen Huawei logo at the top. Now, let's move on to the keyboard. It is constructed from metal, with the keycaps made of matte plastic. The keycaps have a slight dish to them to make them more ergonomic in use, 
but given their design, do keep your expectations realistic. The right shift key holds the NFC sensor for the Huawei share functionality, which is a pretty key feature of the Huawei Mate Station S. The mouse is quite unremarkable, with a rather flat profile that might not be comfortable for people with larger hands. And now it's time to go further into the Huawei Mate Station S. But rather than us reading you the spec sheet, why not take a look inside and check out the components ourselves? The cover is held on by thumb screws, which is a nice touch by Huawei to ease maintenance or upgrades later in the service life of the Huawei Mate Station S. The cover slides off with a gentle tuck of the handle. The main board seems to be a custom MATX sized board with non standard power connectors. The layout is quite unique and the use of sodium memory to save some space. As such, the chipset is actually higher up in the board than you would usually see on conventional consumer motherboards. This also frees up some space for expansion and upgrades, but more on that later. From the top, it seems that Huawei went with proprietary connectors for pretty much everything except for the power button. The USB-C, USB-A and headphone jack on the front panel are connected to the motherboard via a ribbon, which means that you can't simply transplant the Huawei Mate Station S innards into another case. Not like you can get a PC off the shelf to power it anyway, with all the custom power connectors. To the left of the front I.O. connectors are the sodium slots, with one occupied by an 8GB DDR4-3200 module from SK Hynix. Now back to the right of the memory slots, there's the M.2 slot that supports the PCIe 3.0 interface and can fit the full M.2 2280 form factor SSDs. Moving further down the board, there's a custom power connector that doesn't look like it will support either 8-pin PCIe or 8-pin EPS, so I'm not sure what it does. Beneath it, you can see the Realtek 8822CE802.11 AC Wi-Fi adapter, which has been a mainstay of Huawei's AMD-based laptops as well. It seems that Huawei's share is only supported on a select few Wi-Fi adapters, and this is one of them. The adapter also supports Bluetooth 5. There's a load SATA port here as well. Moving towards the left of the Wi-Fi adapter, there's a 256GB WDPC SN730 NVMe SSD. We have seen this SSD featured a few times in Huawei's laptops, so it comes as no surprise. It does a pretty decent job, but it definitely isn't the fastest SSD in the market right now. And then you will find the PCIe X16 and PCIe X1 slot. These should support up to the PCIe 3.0 speeds given the CPU in the Huawei Mate Station S. Now above the PCIe slots is a small remark that reads Pangul M Ref X3. The Pangul series also comprises of PC based on Huawei's in-house Kunpeng SOCs and the fact that this is also a part of the Pangul series hints that the motherboard is an in-house design by Huawei. Now you might be wondering where is the audio codec and stuff. While on conventional motherboards, they are usually located along the lower left corner, Huawei stuffed it in the upper right corner. Quite a way to break convention, Huawei. It's not particularly remarkable with it being the Realtek ALC222 HD audio codec. The power supply is definitely neither ATX or SFX, and I'm not exactly sure if it's a standard form factor at all, but it appears to be custom made for Huawei. There's an 80mm fan intake facing the inside of the case, so it doesn't suck in dust from the underside of the Huawei Mate Station S. It pumps out 300 watts. Speaking of fans and intakes, the CPU is cooled by a 92mm fan, which has a shroud over it to direct airflow. Additionally, there's an 80mm fan that sucks in cool air through the fancy front panel. Now, let's take off the CPU cooler to see what lies underneath. The shroud does seem pretty adamant on staying put until you unclip the clips that hold it onto the cooler. Once it is off, the cooler appears to be pretty standard issue. It's not a member of the AMD Rave series but comes in a square form factor. Our video guy notes that it's similar to the AM3 era stock coolers, a time which I am too young to remember. The cooler is held on by four screws and can easily be mounted and unmounted without worrying about silly clips that won't work when you need them too. There's a nice amount of thermal paste pre-applied on the AMD Ryzen 5 4600G here. The processor touts 6 AMD Zen 2 cores clocked at up to 4.2GHz. The TDP is just 65 watts, so while the cooler is pretty small, it should suffice. Aside from the 6 CPU cores, it also packs 7 Vega based GPU cores that run at up to 1900MHz for sufficient performance to tackle your daily computing needs. Now, back to the cooler. The design seems to be fully aluminium based, which will likely be less effective at conducting the heat away from the CPU IHS into the fins. But since it only has to handle a 65W CPU here, it is quite unlikely that it will be overwhelmed anyway. If 
Finally, my favorite part, the benchmarks. In Crystal Disk Mark, the WD PC SN730 does a good job with 3142 MB per second sequential read, but write speeds are significantly slower at less than 905 MB per second. However, since most users will probably take advantage of the read speeds more than write speeds, the Huawei Mate Station S will still be snappy enough for daily use with this SSD. At least it will be a lot faster than the HDDs we have seen included with some pre-builds. Random performance is also pretty decent too. In superposition, we get a score of 640 in the 4K optimized preset. Cinebench R20 also reveals rather uninspiring scores of 476 in single core and 3441 in multi core. This is most probably due to the fact that the Huawei Mate Station S only packs single channel memory out of the box, which really hurt performance on AMD systems, especially when integrated graphics is involved. A similar theme of underwhelming performance is seen in 3D Mark Times by Extreme, where it scored an overall score of 391 with a mediocre 339 points for graphics and 3123 points for the CPU section. With that said, it is still sufficient to blaze through PC Mark 10. It definitely isn't the faster system we have tested, but it does what it is supposed to do with good scores in essentials and productivity. Digital content creation isn't going to be the Huawei Mate Station S Forte, but if you want to edit photos, it will definitely suffice. Drilling down further into the PC Mark 10 applications test, the Huawei Mate Station S does reveal some good scores with a really high score in Excel. I guess if you plan on crunching numbers in spreadsheets, the Huawei Mate Station S will handle it with aplomb. Now, let's talk about the user experience. Starting off, the visual experience is pretty good. The Huawei Display 23.8 displays rich colors, and as mentioned earlier, it's capable of 72% NTSC gamut, which is around 99% sRGB. That's pretty good in my book, and while it won't satisfy the hardcore content creators, all I can say is that the Huawei Mate Station S itself isn't meant for that demographic. As it is an IPS panel, you can see very little color shifting even when viewing from extreme angles. The colors remain vibrant and the image remains sharp. For those who intend to do more intense productivity, the bezels on the Huawei Display 23.8 is very thin. You can take advantage of that for nice multi-monitor setups to improve your workflow with the Huawei Mate Station S. To be entirely honest, I have been spoiled by 4K displays, so when I saw that it had an FHD resolution, I assumed that the display is gonna look quite shabby. Luckily, I can report that that isn't the case, and text and images were crisp. The 23.8 inch size definitely helps to keep the pixel density high enough to not allow the FHD resolution to look bad. Huawei didn't specify the response time for this monitor, but I guess given that it is a standard monitor designed for office work, it won't be that fast anyway. However, I can safely say that I didn't notice any form of ghosting nor delay in the display. I don't think you will want to do serious gaming on this monitor anyway, as it only goes up to 60Hz. Moving on, let's talk about the keyboard. The Huawei K150 wired keyboard boasts of a biometric fingerprint reader, which isn't common at all. It can be used to log into Windows and is able to read my fingerprint really quickly. It definitely ranks among the better biometric readers I've tested, which reminds me of my experience with the Huawei flagships back then when fingerprint sensors weren't as widely available yet. Typing on the keyboard is a somewhat odd experience though. The base is made of metal, so it has enough weight to stay put during typing sessions. However, the keys are probably tuned to be a bit too stiff as I could feel the keycaps pushing back against my fingertips when I press them. It's still a full-size keyboard, so I could definitely live with it. The layout and spacing are pretty standard too, which is definitely a great convenience as compared to wonky, unconventional layouts. There isn't nearly as much to talk about when it comes to the mouse though. It is a standard mouse with two buttons and a scroll wheel. It isn't tall enough to accommodate palm gripping, so you will have to claw grip or fingertip grip it. Not exactly ergonomic, but I guess some people with smaller hands might find it comfortable. Now let's get to work. The Huawei Mate Station S is perfect for office work. The Huawei Display 23.8 is sharp and vivid, and the performance from the Huawei Mate Station S Ryzen 5 4600G leaves nothing to complain about during regular office work. Be it number crunching or word processing, the Huawei Mate Station S handles it all without any hiccups. Huawei PC Manager is pre-installed on the Huawei Mate Station S2. It is a software suite that enables basic PC health checkup functionalities too, which is pretty useful to keep tabs on your system. And of course, it is also home to the Huawei Share and Multi-Screen Collaboration feature, which is a hallmark of Huawei PCs. Speaking of which, aside from pairing via NFC, 
The Huawei Mate Station S can also seek out other devices that support Huawei Share. I guess this is a necessity, given how you might want to switch to a different keyboard given that the Huawei Mate Station S is, after all, a desktop PC, and it would be extremely foolish for Huawei to assume that users will want to keep using the same keyboard forever. As the content creator, I definitely had to test the Huawei Mate Station S ability to handle my workflow. It does pretty well in photo editing, with no issues at all working on my Sony A7 III RAW files. I have absolutely no complaints here, with the Huawei Mate Station S performing just as fast and snappy as I would eat my editing machine too. It also performs surprisingly well in video editing. While I was expecting it not to be able to deliver a good experience, as my daily driver that packs a Ryzen 7 4800H doesn't really do a good job at video editing, the Ryzen 5 4600G handled my camera's HLG2 video files quite smoothly. I do think part of it can be attributed to Adobe's recent update to optimize the editing process, but I can say that the Huawei Mate Station S is good enough for basic video editing. And while it might be a meme, I actually do believe that you can't say a PC is good if it actually can't run crisis. And unfortunately, the experience here isn't exactly great. I saw an average of 20 FPS on high settings at FHD, but I guess it isn't all that surprising. The single channel memory does bottleneck the integrated graphics, but being able to run games on APUs is enough to bring a smile to my face. And of course, Crisis is a rather demanding game, so if you look towards games like Dota or CSGO, you might be able to get higher frame rates out of the Huawei Mate Station S. In conclusion, the Huawei Mate Station S is a pretty decent productivity machine. It comes with a great display, a keyboard with biometric security baked right in, and has enough performance to handle everything from word processing to light video editing. Huawei Share and multi-screen collaboration is also great to quickly enhance your multitasking experience, on top of being able to easily transfer the images and video shot on your Huawei smartphone to the Huawei Mate Station S. Overall, it definitely is pretty good value for money if you're looking for a desktop PC to up your productivity. I must comment on the missed opportunity here to offer an option with a dedicated GPU and also maybe dual channel memory. The latter would have significantly improved performance from the AMD Ryzen 5 4600G. I also find the lack of an SD card reader to be really quite a waste of the potential here, given that content creators could use the Huawei Mate Station S for photo and light video editing. For RM2999, the Huawei Mate Station S is a pretty good option for those who want a desktop PC that comes with a complete set to up their productivity. There are a few flaws here and there, but they are definitely quite easy to overcome. And that's it for our review of the Huawei Mate Station S. What do you think of the Huawei Mate Station S? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, and if you didn't, let us know why. Make sure to subscribe, and if you haven't already, follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more content like this. I'm Mason Chan from Porter.net and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!